Hello folks, welcome to Scratch the Surface. My guests today are two-thirds of the comedy group, The Katie Dids. The Katie Dids uh, write, produce, star in the TV land show Teachers, which is hilarious. Um, and I was able to get four out of the six of them here. Uh, which is not, not too bad, not too bad. But um, I was able to get uh, Katie Lambert, Caitlin Barlow, Katie O'Brien, and Katie Thomas. And we talked about lots of stuff. And before I get into that, let me just give myself a plug. Check me out on Twitter, at EJ Scott, the podcast, at EJ Podcast. My website's ejscott.com. Um, I raise money for charity. Go to crowdrise.com slash 7on7. Lots of great charities to choose from. Um, and they all need your help. And I, I have a documentary called Running Blind on, on uh, iTunes, Amazon, and Google Play. And it's about me running 12 marathons in 12 states in 12 months, blindfolded in 2012. Why did I do such a thing? Well, uh, I am losing my eyesight to an eye disease called choroideremia that runs through my family. And um, I'm legally blind now. And... Uh, I'm always looking to raise money and awareness for the cause. So it's only two or three bucks to rent it or buy it. So go check it out. It's well worth your time and money. Um, and, uh, and you'll enjoy it. It's good for the whole family. Good for the whole family. And I'm on Instagram if you want to see pictures of my puppy. Um, at EJScott1106. Okay. So we talk about lots of stuff. Uh... Caitlin Barlow uh, kind of founded the group initially, had an idea of getting girls together named Katie uh, and doing some shows in Chicago. And uh, who knew that it would lead to a successful sitcom on TV Land? That's pretty awesome. Um, they just got approved for a third season. Um, I've been binging the first two seasons. Uh, the first season's out on iTunes, the second one's out on iTunes. And they're only, they've only released half of the episodes so far. There's still another half to go. Um, and Caitlin is also, she announced she's pregnant. So we talk about being a, uh, being a mom or going to be a mom. Uh, she also has a bit of a sixth sense. She said uh, she put the Katie Diz together as like a premonition. So we talk about that. We talk about uh, 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 how the evolution of the Katie Dids, where they started out just doing an improv show, and that worked into writing and and making videos for YouTube, and then eventually having meetings to make the show and writing a script and and getting the 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 show sold. It's pretty it's pretty amazing. Um, so we talk about all that. They have lots of great cameos and guest appearances on the show. Uh, from like Haley Joel Osment to Coolio to Marla Gibbs to uh, so many. Um, I'm, I'm, I have a list here. Matt Walsh and Lisa Loeb and Carrie Kinney and Lacey Chabert and Rob Corddry. Um, so many. So go check out the show and uh, check out the podcast. We have lots of laughs. And uh, I hope you will enjoy my talk with the Katie Dids from April 25th. 2017 here they are well hello katie dids hi two thirds yes two thirds of katie it's a pretty good fraction that's not bad yeah. mm -hmm. that's not bad I, I was when i was like oh i'd love to have them on the show uh, i'll never get them all it's i'll true. never get them all <laughs> yeah <laughs> we like to keep it that way we like to keep people guessing who's gonna show up yeah well it's like the president vice president you can't have them both in no. the same place it's dangerous yeah, yeah you can't have us all in the yeah, same yeah. room yeah um well thank you all for being here i thought maybe first we go around and we get a introduction so your name which katie you are uh maybe the character you play and just a little something about you just a trivial whatever you want to start, sure. Caitlin? Oh, sure. Gosh. Um, so I'm Caitlin Barlow. I play Miss yeah. Cannon. Something trivial about me um, is that I'm, I'm having a baby in August. Whoa. It's going to be the first Katie kid. First Katie kid. Pretty exciting. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, yeah, we're starting to reproduce. Who's the lucky stork? <laughs> Well, he's is a, a gentleman named Frank Abraham, who's a wonderful bassist. 
um, mm. here in Los Angeles. Congratulations. Thank you so much. We're very excited. Yeah. We're all going to treat it like the uh, baby. Well, should we know it's she, the, yeah. like she. Like she's our baby. Yeah, yeah we she's keep her. saying our baby. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anybody else pregnant? Um, this would be Not a good time for of. me to announce. No. <laughs> 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 no. Not that we know No. No. Not that we know Go ahead. Of. Katie? Uh, Katie? Yes. So I'm Katie O'Brien, and I play Miss Bennigan. And um, a fact about me is I am not pregnant. Congratulations. Um, so that's it. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. You're avoided. I'm not having a kid. Are yeah. you, but you are engaged. I am engaged. I may say. Yes, I'm engaged to a really nice guy named Chris. Past uh, guest here on I Scratch listened the Surface. to the thank whole you. episode. It was really great. Thank you. I thank learned you. a lot. He was a great, uh, great guest. He's a good, yeah, he's a good sport. That was a two and a half hour podcast. <laughs> it was really <laughs> long, but it was great. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Went it went by really quick for, for me, at least. Yeah. You know. He's a good dude. <clears throat> Right. I'm Katie Thomas. Katie Thomas. Uh, or Catherine Renee Thomas, as my SAG card says. Yes, and your IMDb. Already, yeah, well, that, I guess that could be my, my, my trivial fact is uh, uh, there's a porn star named Katie Thomas, which oh, is why I couldn't use so. it. Yeah, she's great. <laughs> she's very talented. She's great. Um, and I play Mrs. Adler. Mrs. Adler. Yeah, and I was... I'm not pregnant, okay. but I was just in Japan for two weeks, and mm. everyone seemed to think that that was the best time for my husband and I to procreate, but Didn't as far as I know. <laughs> Didn't happen. Well, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. I'll, I'll check in in a few weeks. <laughs> we'll keep you posted. <laughs> I'm Kate Lambert. I play Miss Watson, and a fact about me is... I am a universal blood donor. Hey, wow! So I, I can know. help anyone here Oneg? anytime. Oneg? What is it? Oh, positive. Yeah, you think I it is? Too. Yeah, because yeah. I. Hey. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> yeah. I'm, I'm it's, it's nice because you know you can help anyone. Yeah. Anytime. That's nice. You want some blood? I'll do it right now. Do you? Do you help people all the time? I mean, all the time. <laughs> I, you know. <laughs> She's I actually I, I changed a uh, I changed someone's tire before I got here. <laughs> Did you really? No. Oh. <laughs> no, she's a liar. No, she's not how to do that. Yeah, no. Pretty good if you did. Uh, well, thank you all for being here. Thank I you. have had a really fun time the last couple of weeks binging the two seasons of The Teachers. Oh, so nice. It's been a lot Thanks of fun. Um, is, uh, first off, is there a third season? Yes. Yes, we just good. found out. Good. Last yeah, week. Yeah, last week we found out. Yeah. They keep you guessing, don't 20 they? 20 episodes. They do. <laughs> do yeah. they really? Is it 20? Yeah. yeah. It's 20 yeah. more. So we're so excited because, you know, when all is said and done, we'll have 50 episodes of TV. Yeah. Which is so exciting. Because the Whoa. second season has 20, but they've broken up the season into two halves. Oh, halves. Walking Dead. That's what I yes. keep saying. Yes. I always think. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty much the same show. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not done with season two then. No. It yeah. should be yeah. out in um, the fall at some point. Oh, good. We're not sure an exact date yet. But oh, yeah, good. 50, 50 episodes. That's awesome. It's crazy. Yeah, we're pretty excited. That's, that's awesome. That's really great. Um, so how you guys are all from Chicago, not necessarily originally. Mm-hmm. Um, how did you guys all meet? Did you go through classes together? Were you on a team? or Caitlin? Kate. Katie she wrote over to Caitlin Club Barlow over here. Katie Club, sure. Well, okay, so we all met about eight years ago, nine, 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 nine yeah. years ago. I don't know what year it is. Um, <laughs> the other, I was thinking that in the car. I was like, is it 2014? What year is it? But um, okay, so 2017. So it's been about nine years, um, and we were all in classes around the same time. O'Brien and I were in classes together, um, but none of the rest of us were. I don't mm-hmm. think. Lambert was, and then she broke her foot. Yeah, she made a brief cameo in our level yeah. one. And then, you know, a Never sabbatical. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, we were about, we were all, the point is, we were all about the same level. We were all just kind of starting out in Chicago. And um, I just kept meeting these really, really funny women named Kate or Katie. And, um, I, you know, I was new in the improv scene, and so I really wanted to put together my own projects and get my name out there and everything. And so I, um, I, well, I... I credit it to a vision I had. Mm. Yes. Okay. Um, like a dream? <laughs> kind of a dream. It was sort of it was just sort of like um you know, sort of like a premonition to okay. be I mean, I'm being totally serious. Caitlin when has I say visions this. and they're accurate, just so yeah. you know. Yeah. Okay. So I have I get premonitions about things and the, the the premonition was just you have to put together this group where everyone is named Kate or Katie. And so I was like I saw I saw. Is that a permanent or that sounds like an order? Divine order. Were you like hearing it? I, honestly, not really hearing it, but I, there's or this something. phrase got stuck in my head where it was just there's something about a girl named Kate. There's something about a girl named Kate because I just kept meeting all these really funny women named Kate or Katie. Um, so I sent out a mass Facebook message 
and was like, um, I well, at the time at I.O., there was a show called Radical Concept, and I'd sent out a Facebook message to everyone like, hey, I'm going to pitch that our Radical Concept is we're all named Kate. Or, Katie, do you guys want to do a show? And they all said yes. Um, and the Radical Concept got um, denied. Not uh, radical enough. Yeah, it wasn't radical enough. So at yeah, at IO we got we got <laughs> denied at IO. Okay. Um, and then I was like, you know what? Do you want to do a show anyway? And so we did a show at the playground. And oh, yeah. right on. Yeah, just like a one off. Uh-huh. Like opened for one of the guys that had run there for a while, Claymore, mm-hmm. and had a good time. Half of us didn't know each other that first show. We met for dinner. Was it the six of you? Yeah. It was. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Someone was like wow. shook hands like right before yeah. we went on stage. Yeah. Wow. So half of us kind of didn't know each other mm-hmm. and uh, or maybe even hadn't even seen each other perform. And we yeah. had a great show. And then we, for a while, just did random one-offs because um, we all had our IO groups or Second City yeah. classes or whatever, all our other independent groups. And then took took about six months before we went, oh, you know what? We actually play really well together. We should take this a little more seriously. Yeah. So what was that next step then? Well, we did a run at Studio B with a group called Computer. Uh, and that's when I think we got pretty serious about mm-hmm. it because like, those shows were so much fun. And we hadn't rehearsed together or anything, but... It was just such a positive, fun, like it was the favorite part of everybody's week. Mm -hmm. And so when we were doing that run, you know, we started inviting like, you know, people from IO or Second City to come watch. And then we realized we should take this more seriously. We should get a coach. So we got uh, Anthony LeBlanc, you know, who did Second City Mm -hmm. uh, main stage and directed for Second City um, and directs for Second City. So he came and he started coaching us. So we started doing rehearsals and then we started doing videos. Um, and then everything kind of snowballed from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, w- w- it's so, I've seen a lot of groups like this, you know, that have a concept, of a radical one. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Very <laughs> radical, dude. Very Thank radical. You. Uh, maybe, yes. maybe they're all bald. <laughs> maybe, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, maybe they're all uh, white guys. No, uh, <laughs> never seen that. Nope. Never seen that. But and it tends to not go anywhere. It tends to they just do their thing, and usually there's just weight gained. Usually, but uh, <laughs> but, uh, but you guys actually were like, all right, this is getting more and more. You guys just kept going up a level and up a yeah. level and doing these videos and I guess sketch shows too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, we did one sketch show I think only, but mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, a lot of improv and uh, I think from that Studio B run we had gotten picked up to do a, a Midnight at I O run, which mm-hmm. was like the end all be all, mm-hmm. and um, and for that that's when we started doing these videos to promote the show and when those videos did well. Uh, we realized that that was a thing that we were good at, so we kept pushing that. And and it, something that we really took on was the marketing and the branding ourselves because we weren't seeing a lot of groups doing that really aggressively. And people in Chicago definitely got tired of seeing our posters, I'm sure, but and posts on Facebook and Twitter. But we just got really aggressive about pushing ourselves and and going online and doing the online thing. And at, at that point. I don't think a lot of groups were doing videos to promote mm-hmm. their shows or necessarily their groups. Yeah, we were always pretty ambitious, you know, very focused on yeah. like the next thing, but always still enjoying it, you know. Mm-hmm. And but we did think of it as a business. It was, um, you know, something creative, mm-hmm. of course, but we always thought of the business side of it too. Like Thomas said, like we created a logo for the Katie did. So that was on everything. We created looks for the posters. We had them like shot by professional photographers. You know, we had someone design the posters. So we wanted to uh, put our name out there, but also put our faces out there. So for people who didn't necessarily know the name of the group, they would either see us online and get through our videos, our sense of um, comedy, or they would just start recognizing our faces and hopefully come to the show. Good job. Hey, thank you. (laughs) You know what? I think it worked out. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's great that all of you guys were like pretty much on the same page, it sounds like, of being serious about it. Because some people might be like, eh, you know, I just just want a casual. I just want to jump in and just keep it fun and stuff. Like, you guys were like actively making, being serious about it. I think because we didn't have anything else. And I don't mean that like in a bad way. I mean that like, I think we, you know, we were like performing on IO teams and stuff, Mm -hmm. but... A lot of us at that point like hadn't been cast with Second City. I think a little bit after people started yeah. getting cast, like some of us. And I think at the time, like it was kind of all 
we had. And so it was easy to like pour into it. Like we weren't on a bunch of different teams or it was kind of a priority, I think, which is maybe why. Yeah, we were always all doing something else, you know, but this seemed to be the one that we just kept gravitating towards. It just felt like we were always on the same page with this. And um, and so we just kind of went full force. And it would be, it was interesting because we do one new thing and it would bring us a bunch of views. I mean, which at the time was whatever, 200,000, which now is, is nothing, I feel like, for a viral video. But we'd be like, oh, that worked. Or we get a little write up in, you know, Vanity Fair Italy or something online. And we'd be <laughs> like, okay, so maybe we're doing the right thing. And then we just kind of kept taking it a step further and further and further. And then, um, got involved with the web series, which was kind of like the next big step after all those videos and improv shows. Okay, so where, with the web series, um, what was, the, how many uh, webisodes were there? 24. 24. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And was that, uh, were you guys teachers? I think it's... Yeah, yeah we were all, it was, we were actually the same characters. Some of our names changed uh, for legal reasons. <laughs> and then yeah. also just, just random reasons. But like... The network uh, didn't want... Katie Carlson's name to be Ginger Snap. Yeah. So we had to change it to Chelsea Snap because they were like, this name is just never going to happen. Okay. 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 We get it. But it's funny because the characters uh, in the web series, I think, are a lot more... um, Grounded. Grounded and a little bit like like muted as opposed to what they are now. Yeah. Like we really sort of turned up the characters, really heightened them and really defined them. uh, Both... uh, personality wise but also look wise because we wanted people to with six especially six characters yeah. anchoring a show you want people to not go wait 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 no wait which one is this or what is her deal so yeah. we wanted to really differentiate them right from the from like the get go yeah i think you have done that very well thanks um I, now are those shorts I've, I've, there's a bunch of extras on the season two on iTunes. Mm-hmm. It's like each teacher's like saying like a little. Oh, yeah. Is that is that is that what those shorts are? Uh, no. no, this is just like on YouTube. Like if you uh, search like teachers web series, it'll pop up. But it was like we. It's kind of its own thing that we did. At first, we didn't know we were going to do 24 episodes. At first, we shot for. Three days, mm-hmm. maybe. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, three, three full days. Three full days. And we thought we were going to create it into like a pilot. And then I don't remember why. Maybe we just thought of this. But we were like, nobody's going to watch a pilot online. Like nobody's going to watch 22 minutes. And uh, so then we were like, maybe we should chop these up into like really small pieces. So that's what's on. You can still like look at it online. But everything's under two minutes everything's and 30 seconds. Everything's under two minutes. And, yeah, yeah, we didn't want it longer than that. Some mm-hmm. of our blackouts, mm-hmm. you know. 20 seconds and it's mm-hmm. out but and we didn't write it as a pilot but um you know part of what we were doing as we were writing the web series and some of it's improvised but some of it's write it, written um was you know something that we really I think used for advantage is that everyone knows what school is everyone knows what a parent teacher conference is everyone's had a teacher this isn't an environment or a crazy situation that you have to overly explain you don't need to take five minutes of a web series to be like well this is this character this is and this is how it works in this environment it was just like you see two people sitting at a desk in a library and assign this as parent teacher conferences and you you don't need anything else so it was using a very simple basic setup so that we could avoid having to do a lot of over explaining and just get right to the characters and the jokes. Okay. Um, so was the goal always to have a show? No. It no, totally it, it became that. Like yeah. right away, the first episode got a lot of traction on Reddit. And and it's like the views just like like went up right away. And then we got all these subscribers from that and then it kind of like snowballed. And then we kept going, wow, like there really seems to be an audience for this. So uh, uh, Kate Friedman uh, had an agent. Was she already represented at William Morris? Yeah, I believe so. So she was at William Morris. And so um, good we got, time. yeah, so it was great. So she had, uh, like, we all got in touch with her agent, and um, Alec Botnick. And so he basically took us on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we were talking about pitching the show. Uh, because we were like, we have to do something more with this. Like, like, look at these numbers. Like, this is great. Like, people seem to be interested in this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we never thought making it. I don't think anybody thought initially no. when we did it. We just thought it was like, oh, this is fun and 
threw it up, and then it wasn't until, right. like, William Morris got involved in packaging it. So they started to, like, package it as a show, and we got ready to, like, kind of go out and pitch it. But then TV Land saw it. I think t- TV Land, I think what happened is they called William Morris, and they were like, yeah. we're looking for something that's like Broad City or Workaholics, that's like a workplace environment, like, predominantly female right. Like, do you have anything? Young and edgy. Yeah. And William Morse was like, well, we do. Like, we have this thing called Teachers. And they sent it to them. And then TV then was like, we'll buy it. And so we well, never. We'll pilot. Yeah, yeah, we never pitched or anything. Yeah, I always say that the web series sort of served as like a digital pitch. Yeah. yeah in the sense yeah. that we didn't have a pilot. But we had the world of the show. Mm-hmm. We had all the characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And not only that, I actually think. If we had written a pilot, I don't know if we would have sold it because with six characters, it's very mm-hmm. confusing and written form to, like, you know, yeah. um, to be like, wait, now which one's this? But well, the way we had it, because it was a digital pitch, it was really easy to sort of figure out how six, like, lead characters yeah. would work. And I think yeah. because we've been working together at that point when we shot the web series, we've been together for at least for about four years at that point. So we really knew each other and there I think there was already this great chemistry that they could see in the web series, which like Kate was saying, you can't see that in a pilot, in a written pilot, um, maybe a shot one, but it was great. And not only did we have this world and these characters, we also had clicks, we had views, yeah. we had numbers and that didn't hurt, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they let us stay on as the actors, which yeah. was amazing. Yeah, we, we didn't think that was necessarily going to be the case. We thought, Maybe we get to stay on as writers or producers, but when they said no, that we want you to keep your characters, we were like so excited. Yeah. yeah. And you guys were already building in a fan base too through the web mm-hmm. series Absolutely. and all that stuff too. Yeah. And Caitlin, you were a teacher. I was. I taught fourth grade in Chicago public schools. Is that where this teacher's idea came from? <laughs> no, actually, it didn't. What I did mean... the premonition say? <laughs> <laughs> she was ordered. Yeah, she was ordered. Um, no, the idea actually um, came from Matt Miller, a director in Chicago who um, we talked to previously about directing a different web series, and he was like, ah, it's not quite the right fit for me. But then he, um, you know, he, we, we, stayed, we kept a relationship with him, and he heard a story on the radio about how teachers are, I think it's the most revered profession, but then also the most adulterous. He was mm-hmm. like, that's a really funny dichotomy right there. Um, and he also told us that, we all looked like teachers, uh, which <laughs> obviously is a huge compliment. Right. Um, and so he, you know, he approached us and was like, you know, you guys really should write a web series about being teachers. And we loved the idea. We're mm. like, yeah. So we all um, took a few, months, no, several months. Yeah. We to, wrote to, for our, yeah, yeah to develop the characters and mm-hmm. write the web series. And we didn't know right away if it was going to be elementary or middle school or high school. Right. And uh, so we took some time to kind of figure that out, and we um, we had an experience where Matt Miller brought in a middle school boy he knew somehow for us to just oh, talk God. to, to just see if maybe that was a good... And we immediately realized that we needed to go younger. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> for kids that... We wanted kids that weren't as aware, or we could... The kids that were a little more innocent, where we could be the ones that were doing... Right the inappropriate things and it could maybe go over their head they're or the without characters. permanently being exactly yeah. they're the straight characters they look yes. at us like the audience should be looking at us right. in the show right. whereas this middle schooler just said some of the most horrifying things we'd ever heard in our lives right, right. Um, and we were like we can't handle middle school kids it's it was giving us I think PTSD yeah, <laughs> from our experience work with them <laughs> also elementary school is just such a nostalgic time I think all mm-hmm. of us have such like a soft spot you know it's like where you learn about holidays and, mm-hmm. and the presidents and you know it's just all these like like rites of passage that I think every single person is experienced and you know Halloween parades and so we wanted to explore all that but with our own sort of twisted way yeah mm-hmm. um uh so did you all pick your own characters yeah you all developed your own character we did yeah. was there ever a danger of somebody being too similar like another character well I mean that's something we've had to to, to deal with and um you know when uh right after we sold the show and made the pilot and um, we had a first uh, season order, we really took the time to differentiate the characters um, because we realized going into the first season uh, to write it, it was going to be very important that they were very, very distinct. Yeah. So we took a couple weeks where we had we were working at William Morris and we just had these huge whiteboards and we would go a character at a time. We'd spend a whole day on a character. Where are they from? Mm-hmm. What's the best situation you can put them in? What's the worst situation we can mm-hmm. put them in? Who do they like? Who don't they like? What's their relationship to the other character? We really made sure to differentiate them. I think if you watch the web series, you might be like, 
oh, she's kind of similar to her in the early, you know, they're kind of the blandish 20-something, you know. Um, but then when you watch the show, the characters are very, very distinct. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, is there uh, anybody here... Um, most like their character, or who's the most like their character? We get asked that all the time. Yeah, I'm sure. That's why I'm asking. Uh, Katie Cotton, probably. Totally yeah, she's Karen. Karen. She's yeah. a total whore. Um, that's very her, shallow. That's her wardrobe, yeah, right? Very yeah. shallow. She brings it from home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like she's the least like her character. Yeah, I really do think that. I think Katie Katie Cotton is such a sweet. Like you know, Kansas bred, and, you know, just nerd as a gr- nerd growing up, and still a nerd, and we all we all are. But yeah. she's the least like her character. We all for have sure. aspects of it. Like for example, like me and my character are like super organized. Mm-hmm. I like arts and crafts and mm-hmm. horses. Mm-hmm. And so it's like we all have like these things. Do you that obsess are... on ex boyfriends. No, I try not to do that. Okay, that's, that's just good. bad. That's what diaries are for. <laughs> no, no, yeah. So it's like yeah, the men thing. I'm not like my character no. with. No. Um, and so, but, you know, like the things like, uh, yeah, like making arts and crafts. Yeah. I love that shit. Yeah. <laughs> little type A. Like, yeah. you know, she, you know, a certain way you like yeah. things. I'm and, organized. And yeah. Caroline brings that in, you know, Caroline has that. It's just more specific about every single thing in her life. She She's, wants everything, like... She has her idea of how she wants her mate to be in every single way. Yeah, she's like the end to the nth yeah. degree. She's actually, I wish I was as together as she is. <laughs> like, she has everything, like, put away and, like, whatever. Like, my place right now is a wreck. But, yeah. but Is she yeah. just we compensating? Is she like compensating? That? Because she's so organized, but, like, her, her oh, personal yeah. life is such a disaster. Oh, for sure. Like, yeah, she's one of those people, like, she'll, it's, she's controlling in the sense that, like, she has to have control over this one aspect of her life because the other aspect of her life is so out of control. Right, right. Um, yeah. yeah. Like, she really, she needed to be married, like, yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Actually, like, two years well, ago. I was going to say, <laughs> probably longer ago. Yeah. Uh, and your your yeah. character yeah. is married. She is, yes. To Haley Joel Osment. To Haley Joel Osment. Osment. Who knew, when we wrote that character. Oh God, he's so great. We did not know that was going to be Haley Joel Osment at all. Um it was so fun to get Haley. He was the best dude. Yeah. Um, I think there's always a little bit of a fear of a big name. Um, I think there's like the child actor thing. You get a little nervous. Are they going to be weird? And and he was, I gotta say, the most professional, down to earth, up for anything, yeah. sweet dude. And he brought this totally different energy to the character than we had imagined. I think I had originally imagined the guy's ten years older than me, at least grizzled, lots of like like sleeve tattoos and it was funny because when we were casting Dave Navarro got submitted and I was like that's exactly who I see (laughs) that's exactly but uh, he was doing Lollapalooza and couldn't be there sure Um, and Haley uh, submitted an audition and I remember Sherry Hernandez our casting director had pitched his name and I think we all kind of went Haley he seems so clean cut and just not not these days no and he submitted (laughs) you know it was great too he submitted a tape which I feel like a lot of times when you get to that level for a cable show you'd be like okay offer only and he put himself on tape and we all watched it and totally fell in love with him right away and he just brought a total kind of doofiness to the character that was I think a sweeter doofiness than we had originally seen and he was perfect he's in two episodes yes mm-hmm. will yep. he be returning um, yes I hope, hope so. so he's such an amazing he's actor so too like you know because we're also in on the editing and it was just incredible to watch how he did things differently in different takes to give us so many different options mm-hmm. I mean he's just an incredible actor yeah. yeah we wanted him to be more involved in season two and it just just storyline wise it just didn't work out we kept thinking like how can we bring him back in but for sure in season three yeah, yeah. I think we should try and I think the second half of the second season that's coming in the fall uh, we ended up having some uh, like a handful of relationship plots and one thing we we try not to do is focus too much on the the boy crazy thing because we're an all-female show and I think it really yeah. easy to go there yeah. and um, and we don't want it to be all about our relationships with men and so I think we had a few plot lines that we really wanted to explore and to try to get Haley I mean, he said he'd come back we'd, we would love him to come back in the third season but we just didn't want to force another relationship plot in and, yeah, yeah. and make it all about these relationships with men so don't want to spoil anything and I'm not going to but let's just say some stuff happens in. That's it. That's it. That's, that's it. it. That's, no, that's the worst I, uh, teaser slash best teaser. teaser. Yeah. You can have that. Stuff happens, and you're gonna love it. And you're gonna love it. There's some, you know, some stuff you're gonna want to tune in 
for the third season to see how it happened, what developed. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, that was her audition to be an announcer. So. <laughs> And well, you're gonna open I am your riveted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's good. She's good. Let's just say it involves things. Just things. Stuff. Let's just yeah. say people are there. That. Uh, well, Haley has a sixth sense, just he like does. yourself, Caitlin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would he you does. say you have like a sixth sense? Like, oh, is that Caitlin. a real thing? Like your premonitions and things? Is that a thing? I think it is. I mean, I don't know. I you know I don't know how much of it is. Just guessing. I, I don't know. You <laughs> so you totally undercut the creation of our group yeah. with that comment. You know, just like, so you know. You know We're I, breaking I, up. I don't, I don't know how much of it is just guessing. We'll <laughs> never see each other after this podcast yeah. ever again. No, I don't know. I you know sometimes I think I have premonitions about things. Like I always kind of had, I always kind of um had a a premonition like a feeling that I would just like randomly get knocked up you know like 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 i i i, I is that I, what happened not randomly but like <laughs> um, she was sleeping around a lot and, and then she got this premonition that frankie, she might frankie get pregnant doesn't exist. yeah <laughs> i just am pregnant i don't know why um but no i, I kind of always had a feeling I, w- I wouldn't have a traditional path you know what i mean um mm-hmm. i moved to chicago largely because i had a dream that i needed to move to chicago and do comedy From... I love in Japan. I was living in Japan oh, um, right yeah. after college, and I had a dream where I was setting up my apartment in Chicago. And actually, this is this is actually really weird. Um, no, I knew Adel, I knew Adel Rafai, who's a comedian in Chicago from college, and I had a dream that Adel told me I needed to move to Chicago and do comedy. Did you know Adel? I did. Yeah, I knew him in college. Okay, that would yeah. be really. That would I know. Been yeah. I know. Does he this, know that? No, I've never told him that. Adel, oh. I hope you're listening. Yeah. Um, so, you know, yeah, sometimes I just get feeling, but I've also been wrong. I mean, I've also been wrong. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Caitlin is convinced that I'm going to marry someone who has something to do with boats. And okay. But then and she, she so, said that two two said, years ago. She says yeah. that to everybody. But somebody else had yeah. that exact same premonition. No, you, so you did. <laughs> you did. So we don't know. And also, Katie Thomas and I had just come from the beach. So we're not <laughs> sure. Know. We're not sure if it's the fact that somebody she just had beach tan. and boats on the mind, or if it's real. Yeah. Okay. So you know. So um. So <laughs> I think in conclusion. Yeah. Um. I'm starting a psychic hotline. Ooh. Um. One nine hundred. Call see some stuff. Yeah, see some, see some stuff. stuff. See some stuff. <laughs> okay. Nothing specific. Let yeah. us see. Yeah. Just <laughs> stuff. <laughs> uh, I'll call it. Okay. And see what happens. Great. Yeah. Maybe uh, something will. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Katie O'Brien, your character is a religious fanatic. Yeah. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. Uh, also Freak. a virgin. Virgin. Big V card holder. And possibly bisexual. Yes, she's a little bi curious. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's unaware that she's bi curious. She she would never admit that, but no. she is completely bi curious. She's so in love with Sam. Uh, well, because there was an episode where you and Katie Collotten did a lot yeah. of macking. This is a fun fact. We found out we kissed the same. We have the same like we kept. <laughs> What does that mean? It means that, like, you know, you have like a rhythm of kissing that, like, you rely upon your whole life when you kiss it, or some of us do. I do. <laughs> it's a crush. <laughs> it gets. Yeah, it's a lazy man's way of kissing. Yeah. Um, but we figured out, like, we. It really wasn't that weird. Like at first, we thought it was going to be super weird, and I was like, kind of like, ah, oh, maybe this will ruin our friendship. Like maybe we should have never written this because you forget in the maybe writers' room. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> sorry Chris Rutaski. You like forget. At least I did for like every plot that you forget when you're writing this that it's going to yeah. be on TV. Like because you're in a room with your friends, and you're like, oh, this would be funny. Did you write that scene? That stuff? We did. Yeah. Carlton and I wrote that episode. It's easy to go like to sort of like blow it in the air like glitter. And be like, and that was fun. And then, yeah, like, two right. months later, you're like, oh shit, like, yeah. O'Brien had to be naked for almost an entire episode. And, like, you forget that, like, <laughs> oh yeah, like, because you just think it's funny at the time. It's like, oh, yeah. that'd be hilarious. But then you forget, like, when you're putting on a Merkin right. and right. you're like, family is, are professionals living in a city. Um, that like this is gonna be on TV. Like were you, you forget. Were you really naked? I Mostly? was. I had really large panties on. Okay, underwear. Yeah. I hate panties. I don't know why I said that. Okay. Um, really large underwear on, and I had like taped 
like tape, like see, beige tape. Gotcha. But like I mean, essentially, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, they, it was yeah. a closed set. Naked. Like yeah. they also with a huge merkin. Merkin. It was very heavy, <laughs> and it was so hot that day. Like, yeah. I mean, we were all dying, and then all of us, I think, would almost wish kind we were jealous. naked too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was great. I had a really great time. I had a lot of fun. It was a little disappointing to realize that when we edited, we couldn't even. When we blurred, because we thought it would be funny, the blur, you could see, like, giant brown bush, right. you know, blur, <laughs> and that was not okay with the, the just standards, and so... It looked like a canyon. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it was so big. Yeah. Really so big. we had to even blur out the Merkin, which was disappointing, but, but anyway... But you forget, like, when you're writing this stuff, that then you have to do it, and so anyways... I forgot, Carlton and I forgot that we were actually going to have to kiss each other, but we found out we kissed the same, which kind of broke the ice. Like, it was okay. like, wait a minute, like, I have to refigure out how to do this. But, um, yeah, so, anyways. <laughs> well, good, good job. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, uh, well, in, in that episode that you're naked, yeah. uh, you're doing a lot of stunts. Was that you? Was I that, did was, do all my own stunt work. Was that no, all no, not at all. Ninety-nine percent of those shots are not me at all. Okay. They're this really amazing stunt woman, Tara. Tara, uh, who's great. And Who had she, to, I assume, wear the same thing you. She were. was yeah. naked too, and yeah. she was totally down to do it. And she was such a good sport. And like, I think a lot of those shots are Tara, which is great because she has an amazing body that does not look like <laughs> mine. <Awesome. laughs> so she was really wonderful. Was yeah, yeah, thank you so much. She was really, really cool and, and down to do it and. Yeah, so she did it. She was like flipping around and yeah. doing backflips and aerials, and it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. she's cool. Yeah. She's done a lot of stuff on the show since. But. Yeah, we have a pretty great team of of stunt doubles. These these six women we've had um, a few of them multiple times that yeah. we just adore. We just they come on set and we are in awe and we all just wish we were bigger badasses than we actually <laughs> yeah. are. Um, and there's one Colleton stunt double. Um, oh, Tammy. She looks a lot she like looks her. So they, much they like actually her. look so much alike, like especially in some shots, you could probably use a shot of Tammy mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. Get away with that. So we yeah. love, yeah. Cool. Like we love even the face. Because the whole thing is that you're not supposed to see the stunt double's face ever. Right. But with Tammy it kind of doesn't it. kind of it works. <laughs> yeah. 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 And our joke is that we we want to replace Carlton with Tammy. I'm sure, that, I'm sure that Katie loves that. Tammy is like a way <laughs> a better version of Katie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, now you guys are writing 20 episodes a season. How much harder is that from, like, writing 10? It's real. It's a lot. That's a lot. That's, challenging that's, that's, I mean, that doesn't happen too often these days unless it's, like, prime, yeah. prime time networks, yeah. you know. Uh, most are, like, 8, 10, 12, maybe 13. Maybe yeah. Walking Dead's got 16. Right. And those are hours long. So. Right. But, um, so how mu- and you guys are writing pretty much all the episodes, uh-huh. right? We have two, our writer's room is us, and then we have two showrunners, Ian Roberts and Jay Martell, and they write with us too. And then this year we had um, our script supervisor, Alyssa, write, I think, two scripts. And she was the um, the writer's assistant in the first season, and then we brought her back, and so she you know, she came in her second year and yeah. got some scripts, which was really fun to yeah. have her write. And we had a, a story consultant in the first half, and Jill Cargerman, and she wrote an episode also. So... Out of the 20, I think Ian and Jay wrote two, two. or three. Yeah, two. So, yeah. We so we wrote fif- predominantly 14 do. or 15 of the episodes. Wow. So. Yeah, and it is yeah. challenging, but I think it's it's good that we know the characters so well, and we have such specific, specific backstories for them, but also the characters all have their, like, hopes and dreams, so it's really easy to sort of know everyone so well and know a situation that's either going to set them off um, or like you know, make them hilariously sad. So the it, it's really helpful to have people have such a firm grip on their characters. And the first season, I think we we again six people in a twenty one minute episode to kind of cover those characters is very hard in an ensemble yeah. show like this. So I think the first season was very much really establishing the basics of these characters, just kind of broad strokes of these characters, and um, getting some specifics. In the second season, we were able to. Um, get more specific and I think being able to open up these characters more and getting more into their worlds and their lives outside of school and and just exploring different uh, facets of their personalities has been really fun and and once you start cracking them open more you have more more ideas and more to work with it was hard (laughs) yeah and I noticed that you guys seem to write in pairs is that right do but technically I always say we do write in pairs so you'll see two names on a script but 
by the end of a script, like I never consider scripts I wrote mine Same. because right. everybody, everybody has a touches them yeah, yeah. and like we you know if Barlow and I write a script we might write the first draft but by the end of it I mean everybody's touched it so mm-hmm. much that it kind of is everybody including Ian and Jay you know, are very much a part of of all of the scripts but yeah usually we kind of gang write mm-hmm. so two of us will go off and write the first draft then we'll come back and then people will pitch in the room and kind of we'll just keep rotating yeah I mean and even before we break off into pairs to write the script the eight of us, um, the six of us, and Ian and Jay have have been so involved in breaking the story and coming up with the beats and writing a very <clears throat> detailed outline that it it feels like the entire group has has written it by the time it even starts to actually get written. Yeah. Uh, how'd you guys get Ian? Ian's a UCB yeah. founder yeah. and a hilarious hilarious guy. And that was like a crazy situation. So we had been meeting with showrunners and. Carlton and I, at the time, I think, were on the lot at CBS Radford, and um, which is where TV then used to be. But um, we popped by our executive's office. I think this was before everybody. It was you, yeah. It was Carlton Friedman and O'Brien lived in LA, and the yeah. other three of us were still in Chicago mm-hmm. at that point. So we like popped by, and I remember Brad Gardner, who's our executive and was our executive at the time, was like what do you think about Key and Peele's showrunners? Like, what do you think about Ian Roberts and Jay Martell? And we were like, oh, my God. Like, we could we even get them? Like, they were so beyond, like, what... Like, they were... We could not believe it was even an option. He was like, we're going to try hard for them. And so we met with Ian and Jay. And I remember, like, Ian... Like, we all grew up, like, watching yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah, 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 And we were in this room with... And, you know, we Jay, did. We were in a Skype phone call. Yeah, so the, we had, we were like a, we did video conference. So it was like yeah, everyone was like there seeing them and meeting yeah. them. It was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. And I remember thinking like I've watched you like I can't believe I'm in the same room as you. Like this is so weird. And I was really <laughs> nervous. And I think we were all like hee, 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 like very like <laughs> quiet. And it was crazy because they I think at the t- they both were like we really love the show. Like we would love to be a part of it. And we were just like, this is bananas. Like, we could not... It was so cool. But they were also on our wavelength. I remember, like, during that first video conference or whatever, Jay Martell and I made a joke at the exact same time. Uh And it was just like, you know, they just sort of got us, Mm -hmm. um, I felt. Yeah. Was there a thought of having a female showrunner? Yes. We had only met with females. I think we only met with one one, or two other showrunners when they were women. And I remember thinking... I remember thinking this, and I think we all kind of thought this at the time, like, oh, it should be a female. Like, we should have a female showrunner. Like, but then I remember thinking, like, no, like, we need some male perspective. Like, it can't just be Mm. women writing for... Women washing. Right? Right. Which is so common. (laughs) And something we're trying to battle, you know, up against all the time. Um, But I remember thinking, like... And then I think kind of we were like, oh, it doesn't matter if they're male or female. Like, they're a great fit for the show. Like, they, they got the comedy and got the show and then you know it was nice to have like a male point of view Mm -hmm. but it was weird because our writer's room was predominantly female except for Ian and Jay and Aaron Mervis who's our writer's assistant that there were a lot of times where we were like well this is what a diva cup is or (laughs) this is like we had to explain to them certain things some woman things yeah that they may not have known much about Deb my girlfriend explains women things to me all the time Uh, yeah Yeah. she's got it it has to be done are you gonna know I need that yeah. I need to empathize, empathize yeah. 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 and yeah. have compassion yes. Yes. and all these things. Yes. You're doing a great job. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, so uh, some of you moved out here first. Mm-hmm. When did that happen and what was the idea of moving out first? Um, well, Brian was the first one. I was the first. I moved. So I was living in Chicago. I went to school in Chicago. and You're from where originally? I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. Oh. So from mm-hmm. Omaha, and I was living in Chicago and going to school, and I was performing at I.O., and I took classes at Second City, but I never really, like, I did Skybox shows, which is how Lambert and I met, but I never really got involved there. But my last year in Chicago, so I had auditioned for Second City but didn't get cast, and then my last year in Chicago I did this play called Love Lost and What I Wore, which is like a... It's a Nora Ephron. Mm-hmm. Yes, so I did that for about eight months, I think. Uh, and while I was doing that, I got to work with Nora Dunn, who was so cool. Oh, and she gave me this like life-changing speech where she was like, you need to move. Like, you should not stay here. 
She was like, if you stay here, you're, she was like, it's inevitable. Like, you just need to move now. You're young and you should go. And I'm a premonition. A little premonition. Uh, right? told it. And you're so not I'm, alone, Caitlin. It's right? You know. <laughs> so the rest of us can see stuff too. Yeah. Um, so I remember her like telling me this and she, it really like, you know, sat with me and she said, I'll introduce you to my manager and fly out to LA and you can meet with him. And wow, that's um, so nice of us. Yeah. Very, very nice. I feel very much indebted to her for giving me that speech. And she was in the play too? She was okay. in the play too, yeah. And uh, so her manager agreed to sign me. And then I remember thinking, like, well, yeah, like I'm not going to get cast with Second City. Like, if I really want to do this, I should go. So then I moved. Um, I think I was out here a year before we sold the show. So it was just like kind it was of like, right after we shot. We shot the web series. Yeah. In like July of 2012, uh-huh. and then you were gone like a month and a half I later. I pissed out in August. Yeah. yeah. So I came out here, and uh, it was really depressing for yeah. <laughs> a little uh-huh. while. And you met Chris out here. I mean, you knew him in Chicago. I did. I knew him in Chicago, but not well. Uh, did you ever meet him in Chicago? I did. I have a very specific memory of meeting him, and I actually thought he was a douche. I remember. <laughs> Me too. Me too. But, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I joke with him about this all the time, but actually, this is really weird. So, Katie Colton did some video for Time Out Chicago. I remember this. And yeah. she asked if I wanted to come to the Time Out party mm-hmm. to, like, for the video, and I was like, Sure. So we went to the party, and Chris also did the video, and I remember meeting Chris there and being like, oh, that's who this Chris Watoski guy is. And I remember kind of thinking he was like a – I mean, I thought he was really, really cute, but I remember thinking like, eh, this guy's kind of a douche. And <laughs> writing it off. And I think this is how to all be great fair, love stories start. Are yeah, you listening, the way. Chris? Yeah. To be fair, I think he kind of thought I was like a, you know, like a prissy, like bimbo or something. And – then it wasn't until he moved out here that I kept seeing him at parties and we mm. started to like hang out that I was like, oh, he's really wonderful and got to know him. And um, so that's kind of how. But in Chicago, we never, which is good, actually. I don't think it would have worked if we dated in Chicago. I think it would have been a disaster because <laughs> I was a hot mess and I think it just would have crashed and, and he was still a douche. Yeah, yeah. He was, he's still a douche. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, and he is now on Love on Netflix. Love, yeah. Uh, he's got a regular... Regular gig, that, yeah. That's pretty sweet. I know. Power yeah. couple. Yeah. Power right. couple. Yeah. Um, Caitlin, um, uh, your character is a little hippy dippy. Uh huh. And also a little bi. Uh, she is. She well, she's. Or try. Um, <laughs> she's just pan. Like she's open oh, to. Pan. She's open to it all. Anything. Anything. Like, Whatever. Sexu- what do you sexuality got? Sexuality is beautiful. Yeah. And she feels that she learns and evolves so yeah. from every sexual experience. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, she'll, you know, she, old, young, big, small, male, <laughs> woman, somewhere in between, doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. So there's lots of opportunity for love interest. In yeah. Your <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We sort of, um, you, um, I will say you do meet one of her, one of her friends. This, uh, this half, back ten. Yeah. The back ten. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Because you were like kind of hooking up with somebody and a college whatever. student. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And a Chicagoan <laughs> plays that person. Yeah, yes. not say male nice. or female, yeah. but it's a Chicago person. Okay. Nice to, okay. Nice to um, so. Uh, Katie, you were out here. A couple other people started making their way out. Was everybody like going, okay, we're going to move out to L.A.? Was everybody thinking that? I definitely wasn't. No. I was teaching in Chicago, and my plan was to teach in Chicago forever. What about the premonition, though? You were going against your own premonition. <laughs> I know. Girl. I know. Oh, I, know. Yeah. I was must be thinking very hard. about it. like, uh, But I was working at the Second City at the time. I did the main stage. Holly Laurent left, so I took over for her, and oh, I finished yeah. the run. That's great. And then, uh, yeah, it was really fun. And then I did another show at Second City. I got hired right after that. But um, as soon as I was done with that show, I was going to come out. Um, I just sort of felt like it was time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I uh, I wasn't quite sure. Um, I think I I you have a husband. I, I, yeah, I do. We we were um, we met um, right after actually also right after we shot the web series. So when we met, oh, okay. we were we hadn't even released the web series yet. Um, and um, he was like, "That girl's gonna be on TV." I gotta lock it in. <laughs> um, no, but we we met and we were dating and you know like he had just moved to Chicago that year and um, but I was feeling kind of. 
um, like I was losing interest in doing improv. Um, mm. The the fire kind of died for me. Mm. You know, in the last two, like year and a half, two years, I was in Chicago and I loved improv, but I was just not having as much fun with it anymore. And I was thirty and was like, you know, I, I just can't say that I own drink until four in the morning sure. anymore. I'm just kind of I not? like my boyfriend and I like <laughs> watching Netflix and like yeah. getting outside of my improv bubble and yeah. finding things to be creative about as opposed to just improvising about improv and. Um, so I was, I think I was just in this phase of like, I'm putting more focus on other parts of my life and I'm, and the web series was doing well and I was kind of like, you know what, if this, if this takes us to LA, it'll take us to LA. And, and John and I started talking about moving out of Chicago. Um, what does he do? He, um, he is, uh, he has his own business. He's an entrepreneur. Okay, he works that's good. In a consulting business. So he could move around. Yeah. And he okay. was working for himself and he was in a position where um, he could go elsewhere. And yeah. LA was definitely not the place he ever thought he was going to go. He did improv and comedy throughout his 20s. He was getting a science degree. And so it was helpful to balance out his science with, with something creative and, and artistic. And he's a scientist that can talk to people, um, unlike many. And so he he didn't, but he never thought he was gonna like pursue yeah. comedy as, as a profession. And so think, thankfully he was really, really game about moving to LA and was a really yeah. good sport and we'd only sold the pilot when we moved here so yeah. we didn't even risk. know that we were, it was a huge risk yeah. and we were in the process of saying we're going to leave Chicago so we felt like well this makes the most sense and um, thank goodness it's old and he he thank God loves uh, LA yeah. uh, because great. if he didn't there'd be, there problem. could be some <laughs> resentment there could be some you know and he uh, he loves it and has yeah. found a place for himself here and it's a great great cheerleader for for me and for the group so that's great yeah he's awesome uh caitlin you yes. were teaching i was and you were gonna teach i just yeah i mean i just thought i would uh be a teacher in chicago forever i you know i i'd come out to la and i was like i like it but i didn't necessarily want to move there and then you know as as the web series you know got more successful and once we saw the pilot then i was like okay it is it is time to move um, but it wasn't necessarily and retire from teaching, kind of. Yeah, right? I mean, kind of. It's really weird. Like, I have my master's in education, and sometimes I'm like, I sort of am using my degree. Yeah, you know, actually, I'm set. You yeah, know. she does big time. Like, Caitlin's a really good like barometer, resource, right? Yeah, yeah. She's a resource. Yeah, yeah, she'll like tell us like this would never happen, or yeah. like like she, um, Caitlin for years, like ever since the first season she was like we have to do a plot on common core she's like this is a thing in the education world and we were like yeah yeah we don't know what that is and <laughs> it kind of just got like kept getting pushed off but she kept pushing it and it was like one of our most successful yeah like plots throughout the season because so many teachers related to it and she's mm-hmm. really great with like what would actually happen what wouldn't happen and like that inside it's teacher like lingo i'm sorry no, it's like when cop shows hire a cop. Yeah. Yeah. It's like having Caitlin on yeah. is, is so is so amazing. It's like, so, it's like the wire. We're basically like the wire. Yeah. yeah. We're, We're like, like the walking you know, down the wire. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. The wire walking down. Uh, so then when did you... I think, how was it quitting? Like, how was that? <laughs> oh, my oh gosh. gosh. This is my so, favorite story of all. This is great. So, um, were you just like, fuck off, kids? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> I... So I, fi- I finished the I finished the school year. I'm so a was, fucking celebrity yeah, now. Yeah, suck my dick. <laughs> no, I finished the school year because I just thought that'd be really bad karma to leave in the middle of the year and then go write a show about teaching. Yeah. So so they were all out here. They started writing the pilot while I was um, in Chicago finishing the school year. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I wanted to, I, I loved, loved, loved my job and I loved my school. So I wanted to leave as respectfully as possible. So about one or two months before the school year ended, I, I asked for a private meeting with my principal, and I told him, you know, my comedy group sold this pilot, I'll be moving to Los Angeles, I'm not going to be returning. And he was sad, but he understood, and was very cool and supportive. Um, and a couple days later, at a staff, at an all-staff meeting, um, at the very end of the meeting, uh, as everyone was being dismissed, um, he made an announcement. He's, um, <laughs> about my departure, he said, um... And uh, everyone, he's a very like thick Chicago accent. We want to wish a fond farewell to Caitlin, who's moving to Hollywood to be a movie star. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knew she performed. Like, there was no context. She just sounded like an absolute lunatic. 
<laughs> like delusional baby Jay. I, I picture in this is like the room is dark and a spotlight comes on Caitlin and she's got a boa and yeah. like crazy blonde wig and a fur coat and like and she, stands she's up. She's gonna marry and, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like it was very like there there was no like oh, that's wonderful. Everyone just looked at me like I was bad, crazy. <laughs> just like, okay, 30-year-old woman, you're yeah, going to go to so Hollywood funny. and be a movie star. Not okay. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck, really girlfriend. Yeah. Good luck. Well, you showed them. I yeah. think that that's kind of representative of what a lot of our, um, like, Midwest, you know, friends, not, not a lot of them, but like a handful of, I think there's always some aunts who think that oh, we're yeah. out here because yeah. we have a TV show. We are, like, living in mansions and you know like I think there's this idea that well if you have a TV show you must have tons of money and you must be famous and people and it's like no like no one knows who we are and don't get recognized there's hundreds of TV stations (laughs) my mother-in-law bless her found out that the gentleman who plays hot dad was on Young and the Restless I think Young and Hungry no it was a no it was a legit you're right you're right soap opera and um, he had a recurring role for maybe like seven or eight episodes. And when she figured out before the first season came out that Ryan was the guy from the the soap opera, yeah. she lost her mind. She told me the entire plot of what he did. And he was a lawyer. And he did this and this. And, and, she t- and he's very handsome. And oh my gosh, when I visit, can we go to his Malibu beach house? And I was like, that is so not... <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm ninety nine percent sure that's not where he I, lives. I think he has like multiple roommates. Just not like that. Malibu, 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 Malibu. Malibu. It's not Malibu proper. Or it's yeah. the outskirts. But yeah, it's like no, that's not. Nope. We yeah. still live in studios. Yeah. And, that's so funny. Yeah. Are you you mean TV Land's not paying the big 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 bucks? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but so, but so, hashtag blessed and grateful. We're doing yes, it. No, we're doing it. We're, yeah, we're doing it. It's generous. better than our meager, like, yeah. getting paid to coach improv groups and work at Starbucks in Chicago wages. Well, it's such you know, a great not... s- s- stage for you guys. Absolutely. You yeah. know, to show your talent, your writing and acting yeah. and comedy yeah. and stuff like that. It's and awesome. I'm not just saying this because we, we just called out not getting paid enough, but like <laughs> TV Land has <laughs> been <laughs> legit, like, and this is, this is very, very truthful. They have been the most incredible network to work with um they have given us not only did they give us all writing producing and acting credits and just recognize that we had this weird chemistry and this fun family going in and let us all keep that family unit going in they have been just amazing at just pushing us to use our own voices and go further and further with our weirdness and our darkness and our quirkiness and everything that we are, they have been, they've pushed us further and further and further. And I don't think a lot of networks do that. And I think we were very lucky to come in at a time where they were changing and taking a lot of risks and committed to those risks. Cause I think a lot of networks say they're going to take a risk and then they don't or they freak out. And TV land was like, we're going to give these six women who have never worked in television <laughs> writer, producer, actor credits and just trust that it's going to be great. And so we are, I mean, as, a, as an artist, as a creative person, it's, it's, we are unbelievably lucky to have the opportunity that we have. Well, I, when I started watching the show, I was surprised at how edgy it was. And the, mm-hmm. there's cursing yeah. and, you know, just a lot of dark humor. Yeah. Dark. <laughs> that, that's because of them. They told us not to hold back. Yeah. Um, and it was so freeing to have mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, It's also crazy because, like, we, you know, we'll be in the room and, you know, like this season we did a musical number and we were yep. like, what if we did a musical? And then... We called TV Land and they were like, sure. And then in the back 10, there's a whole episode, uh, not the whole episode, but a majority of the episode takes place in the 1940s and we shot it in black and white and it's very stylized oh, and wow. noir and they were very cool with that. And like literally, I think everything we've said we've wanted to do, uh, they've been like, sure, absolutely. Like they could not be more supportive or encouraging, which is kind of insane. Yeah, and their like, notes are great. Yeah. Like they really, you know, there's this whole joke here, or not joke, but just people know that executives are gonna give bad notes or like that's the idea of like, their notes are gonna change the show or make it worse or take away our vision. And I really think that I'd say the majority of the notes that they give us um, make the show better or we've learned as creators and writers from because we've learned how to write for television just doing it. Yeah. So I think we've, we've 
gotten a great education from them, which is so lucky. Are the episodes airing uh, in order? Are um, they in order? In terms of like how we wrote them, how we wrote yeah. them, no. or how you film them, or when no, you film them? we no. cross boarded. So we were filming um, a bunch of they. They were all kind of filming two. For the most part, it was time. two episodes at a time. Um, um, so we cross boarded them, and then yeah. no, we kind of actually oddly like write them all, and then at the end we were like, okay, where should episodes go? Kind of naturally, yeah. we know where they're going, but. Then we kind of rearrange them at the end. Be like, oh, this should go here. This should go here. There's some season arcs that we we needed to make sure made sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with Hawk Dad, yeah, Dad and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And most of that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, some other stuff oh. and things. things and some and things, stuff. Uh-oh. some stranger things <laughs> coming up. Uh, <laughs> well, you guys have a lot of great guests that come on the show like in the first episode that I saw I don't know if it's one of the first one that was shot but Allison Brie mm-hmm. now she's that was the pilot, is she yeah. still uh, EP mm-hmm. yep oh great yeah. how'd you get Allison Brie that's awesome we got her through WME mm-hmm. WME when they were like packaging the show um, pre TV land yeah they were like we should find somebody like attached to this cause they were you know nobody knows who we are and so they were like we it would help if we had somebody attached that could be like oh Allison Brie's involved and so we met with a bunch of really cool people, and then Allison um, came in, and we loved her, and felt like she was like the seventh Katie did. So we were like, "Oh, we'd love for you to be our EP," and then she agreed to be in the show. Yeah. So. Pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Pretty cool. And your other guests you've had, uh, Lisa Loeb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa Loeb. Yeah. Loeb. Yeah. Right? That yeah. was amazing. Shout yeah. out to the nineties. She's good friends with um, Gary Corden. Gary Corden is our production designer, um, and. She's, she hasn't aged literally she's one day. Yeah, she's she's great. She's oh my god! Twenty years. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, she's awesome. She's so great. And then we went to a concert, some of us afterwards, that she did, and she played a song that we requested, and Aww. I almost died. <laughs> yeah, she's so great. Um, Marla Gibbs. Marla oh Gibbs. my god! I love Marla Gibbs. That was. Great. She's hilarious. Yeah, you think she's, like she's been hilarious yeah, for like fifty no. years? Oh, <laughs> I know. Oh my she my god. Still has it. She's, uh, she still has it. She should she come does. back. She should. Yeah. I hope she comes back. I'm going to make a request that she okay. comes back. I will take you up on that. I'm not opposed to that. Matt Walsh. Oh, yeah. Matt Walsh. The great Matt Walsh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sam Richardson. Great Sam Richardson. Yeah. Yeah. Couple yeah, of got a couple deep guys. Yeah. Uh, Coolio. I love that little oh cam- cameo of Coolio. <laughs> Coolio was very interesting. Wow, Coolio is a character. Yeah, He's I bet. Great. <laughs> and Coolio had uh, the line was... There are no victims at, mm-hmm. in this classroom yeah. at Fillmore. At Fillmore. Which is but, a, was, yeah. but the original line I think was "There's no victims in this classroom," which is from Dangerous Minds because right. it's a Dangerous Minds parody. But then he kept improvising, so he walks by Miss Snap, Katie Carlton in the hallway, and so he was supposed to walk by her and then stop with her and say, "There are no victims at Fillmore, or this classroom, or whatever it was." <laughs> and then as he kept walking, he looked behind him though and kept improvising, "Dead ass though." Yeah. And the first time it happened, we were like, oh, okay. And then the second time it happened, we were like, okay. And then the third time it happened, we were like, oh, shit. And then the fourth time, we were like, uh, Mr. Coolio, um, if we could maybe drop that ass, though. <laughs> like, I think he said something about biting her ass, yeah, too. Yeah, There were various maybe. things about her mm-hmm. ass. So he was, so he was taken with... Katie, he, was, he jumped was, to the material. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to be fair, she has an amazing ass. Yeah. 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 She's a great ass. Yeah. 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 So he was... You, Anybody would have said my hands yeah. off of it. Yeah. Anybody it was said. an honest, yeah. yeah. He was just being yeah. true to the character. <laughs> yeah. The but he was great. He was very great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Carrie Kinney. Oh, yes. oh my God. She was awesome. Love, love, love. love yes. her. her. Uh, Lacey Chabert. Yes. 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 She is so great. Yeah. She was after your man. Yeah. Well, she had, she, she, had she had him. She got him. She got him. He got got. She yeah. is a fantastic actor, too. Yeah. Yeah, She's yeah, like yeah. the nicest person. She was perfect for that role. Yeah. Yeah. Party of Five Watchers. Right here. Um, I didn't right watch here. Five. I know. Really? I know. I know. I know. Our star yeah. level, Big like our starstruck fans. level with her oh my changed. Gosh. Because she was really good. She was really good on the show. Uh, Rob Riggle, uh-huh. love him. He's love cool. such a nice, awesome, hilarious. He's um, my brother's in the service, and um, I talked mm. to Rob about it because my brother was in Afghanistan as well. Because Rob Riggle was there yep. way back in the day, and um, I you know told Rob that, and my and Rob was like, 
tell your brother I said hi. And I told my brother, Rob Nagel says hi. And he, it was like the highlight of his life. Aww. Aww. He was so Sweet. excited. I'm glad it was just hi. Yeah. 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 I don't want him to have a kind of attack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rob Corddry, who was oh so God. funny. Oh, my so God. Cool. He's he, the greatest. He is amazing. So cool. So supportive of the show. He's yeah. a brilliant actor, yeah. too. Really good. And you have a, a Chicago guy who's also got a producing credit. Yeah, I'm sure there are yeah. probably more of them, but Alex Fendrich was. Yes. Yeah. Alex helped us. Uh, it was a part of, um, so when we were doing the web series, this super cool production company, they're out here in LA, but they're in Chicago, um, Cap Gun Collective, who Alex works for. And now He's Matt, one of the partners. Yeah. Matt Miller works uh, with them too. And a guy named Matt Abramson, who also used to be in the improv scene a while back. Um, but they like, so we did this Kickstarter to raise money for the web series, but then Cap Gun matched it and like exceeded it even more and was so generous to like I think help they us film it by a gajillion. A lot. Yeah. 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 So the Alex was a part of it and still is very much a part of the show and is there all the time and is yeah, great. He lives up we here love now. him. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. The the show takes place in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Suburbs. Yeah. Suburbs? Yeah. But it's never <laughs> unnamed. Cold. Yeah. It's unnamed. unnamed. But you, yeah, it's never cold. you mentioned a couple It's a warm Chicago. You mentioned Schaumburg. Schaumburg. Yeah. Lake Michigan again. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, it's in it's, it's in, in Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Totally. Uh, where do you actually film? We film in, in the valley. In the valley, deep, deep in the valley. But it's weird because the show does take place in Chicago and we wanted to film in Chicago, but for logistical reasons and expenses and stuff it didn't work out. So we filmed out here. But um like LA schools don't have hallways. And so we had to like build a hallway and like when we were scouting, we had to make sure the shrubbery would match Chicago, that like the trees would palm match. Trees. Yeah, so it's <laughs> kind of or mountains. Nevada. There's no, wait, there's no hallways in it's no, no. no, they're all breezeways. So we had to build yeah. hallways in both. Uh, we have two different schools, mm-hmm. actually three. The pilot's a different school too. But yeah, they had to build a fake hallway in the cafeteria. And also like they do something, I forget the term. Um, and I didn't know this, but you know they they build a fake tree around palm trees. Oh, yeah. So, but I can't oh, remember yeah. what the term is. <laughs> but they do that. They like basically dress the trees. But lucky for us, yeah, the school that we to. film at doesn't have that problem. But they do that all the time out here when they film. They like basically dress and like rebark a tree. That's amazing. <laughs> I wish I could know the term. But the yeah, term is uh, showbiz. <laughs> <laughs> you know, thank you so much. It's biz with a z. Um, <laughs> Magic. So yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. Cause you you see like those teeny bopper kind of movies where there's a California school and it's always like the classroom opens out into open air and there's right. lockers outside. You know, yeah, if you think about it. Yeah. yeah and that's yeah, a lot of the schools out here are. Yeah, it goes which is not a Midwestern uh, thing at all. No, it's not. <laughs> no, that's a different show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My For mom sure. was a teacher of elementary oh, school. Great. That's awesome. Oh, what, uh, what grade? Uh, mostly I think second. Okay. okay. That's Seems a like a good grade. It's a good grade. Mostly second. How are you guys liking working with kids? It's great. It's interesting, uh, because they're very professional and they're really? very um, most of them. Most of them, yeah. Every who, once in a while. Who do you hate? Name a uh, name. Just name a few uh, names. You, okay. you absolutely you ever heard of Bobby, this kid? Susan, <laughs> Kevin McAllister? Janelle. Wait a second. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's way too old to be in this role. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the most part, they're really professional. Yeah. And like, yeah, much More better, than us. much better careers than us. Yeah. Oh yeah, they've all yeah. worked with like yeah. people that we would die to meet. Yeah, yeah. Really. One of one mm-hmm. of the little girls we had from the first season who played Annika, the foreign exchange student. She played the young um, uh, Dolly Parton in the recently made for TV Dolly Parton <laughs> movies. Really? Uh, there was one last Christmas, and I think they're making an or like two Christmases ago, and they're ma- making another one. But um, there's pictures on her little little girl act child actor Instagram of her That's hanging funny. out with Dolly Parton. Another little girl is now starring in that movie Gifted. Yeah. She's the gifted little girl. Oh. I don't know. I can't with Chris her. Evans. Yeah. With her name. Um, Usually it's weird because like Mackenzie. They'll Grace. come yeah, they'll come on the show and do like a small part and then you'll see like some huge billboard mm-hmm. with then like their face on it. It's like, oh, 
Okay. So <laughs> it's hilarious too because okay. clearly their parents are running their Twitter accounts. They're because right. they they they're jumping on board with what we're all supposed to be doing, which is sure. getting a big social media following, and they'll they'll tweet. Had a great time on set today. Such an honor to work with you know the kitty yeah. dids, and it's like your your mom definitely tweeted this. <laughs> like you hopefully you're at home playing video games now. You know yeah. or playing outside. I recognize one of on. them is now on uh, Last Man on Earth. Oh, oh, yes. Um, oh, I, I can't think of it either. One of the little Mateo's on Westworld too. Mate- yeah, I oh, spotted yeah. he had one he had one bit in the first season in the, yeah. in the I think maybe the first or second episode, but Isabella Alvarez, oh, right. who was in the pilot, she played the little girl who kept drawing unflattering pictures of a snap. She had a recurring on Westworld. Yeah. She was in a few. They all have better careers than we do. For sure. <laughs> it's great, though. It's they don't know how to write, though. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know they yeah. Some of them showed me their scripts, and they are garbage. Okay. <laughs> there was, was it the pilot or season one? Somebody overheard some mother like, oh, yeah. talking to know. another mother, and they were walking away from craft service or something. I don't remember, but she was like, I don't even know who any of these people are. <laughs> Like she was so disgusted that like there wasn't any name a part of the show. It just beyond. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I so guess. funny. She's not a Second City fan. No, not. Okay. She right. missed our Studio B run. Yeah. yeah, she wasn't watching the Herald. Yeah, yeah. something like that that really takes you back to the earth. Oh yeah. Uh, do you guys improvise anymore? Any of you? Not of us there. Too, but not as a group yeah. much. We kind of. It, we just never had the time to like do it um, consistently, and so I think we were kind of right now we're kind of taking a break. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think when you it. just don't you do it for it. yeah, you sometimes, sometimes. I, miss, I miss loving doing it. Like yeah. I still can have fun doing it when we do the occasional one off. But um, yeah, I miss I miss really being so geeked out about it, you know. And I yeah. and I, I do miss that. Where are I, you from originally? I'm from the Detroit suburbs, Detroit. and I started doing improv in Detroit after I graduated from college. They had a Second City Detroit for about ten years, and that's where Sam Richardson started, yeah. and Tim Robinson, mm-hmm. and Keegan Michael Key, and Josh Funk, who does all of our amazing music, music for the show. Oh really? He's in it. Yeah. Yeah. Funk. They were Naima all Second it, City, yeah. all oh. Second City Detroit people. Who I and Mark Evan Jackson, mm-hmm. um, Mary Beth Monroe, all those yeah. guys came from Detroit. Right. And I, I grew up watching them on the main stage. My parents would take me downtown when I was a, a teenager and preteen, and best. and just like really loved what they did. And so I started taking classes and doing improv there for a little while, and then thought I'd move on to uh, Greener Chicago. Pastures. Yeah. Colder pastures, colder pastures. <laughs> just when you thought it couldn't get colder than Detroit. <laughs> uh, whose genius idea was it to hire Tim Bagley? So the great Tim Bagley. It oh. was all of ours, but it's weird. So we. When we wrote the character of the principal, we did not have anybody like Tim Bagley in mind mm-hmm. at all. Um, and we kind of, Ian Roberts was reading it, the role, at a lot of table reads. And so we kind of were like, oh, yeah, that's like, that seemed to fit like that, his type, you know, like gruff, gruff, and, you know, very annoyed. masculine right. and annoyed yeah, and bad yes. out. Angry. Uh, Almost like a rageful. military. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we were holding auditions and, I know I was in the it room. Me the and you. Us, yeah. Me and Katie Thomas were in the room, and Tim Bagley came in and read, and we both were like, "Oh my gosh, this guy's, like this guy's." We knew I knew who he was. Like yeah. you know, he's in everything, and we both recognized him. And then we were like, "This is a totally different idea of what we had in mind." But then when everybody watched his tape, I think everybody was like, "Oh this yeah, is this is this is the principal," and um, so we. Tim is honestly a gift. He yeah, he, is. he is a delight to oh, yeah. a work with and b he's so fun to write for. So yeah. fun because yeah. it's just this sad sad character, <laughs> yeah. and you know yeah. no matter you know he's gonna do so much with the material. Yeah. He truly can make the word okay a laugh line. Like yeah. in this episode, we just edited, yeah. and it's just he can turn anything into a laugh. He's brilliant. He's, he's the best. He's also a past guest on oh, Scratch Oh, Service. no way. Yeah, so he's funny. so funny. He um, also, upcoming, has a budding romance. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, so. Man or woman? We don't know. <laughs> we'll see. We'll uh, see. Yeah, he's basically the funniest person alive. Yeah. You know who else is on the show in the back ten? Uh, Jeff Ross. And oh, we, Caitlin and I, roaster? we didn't get to see it, yeah, but we nice were show. at that Largo show where he roasted you. Oh, you were there? We were there. Carlton and Caitlin and I were all there. That's so funny. And then we didn't catch you after the was show. Was it a good roast? Were there. It was a great roast. Really? Was Jeffrey, roast. you felt good about it? 
You felt I mean, like I, I I've seen him. Ro- I go to Largo a lot. I'm going tonight actually, and uh, he plays there a lot. And he always roasts people at the end of his bit. And he always says, "If you're disabled or pregnant, <laughs> come on <laughs> up." <laughs> so I always think about it. And I'm like, hmm, and I never do it. And then yeah. that night I was like, all right, why not? And then he actually, I thought he went pretty, pretty easy on me. He did me. go pretty Good easy on you. <laughs> but yeah. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll take a blind yeah. joke from yeah. Jeff Yeah, right. I mean, of course. He does it in such a, he de- he really does roast people in the most amazing, amazingly loving way. It's yeah. so, he can say the most heinous things and at the same time you're like, oh, he loves this person or he really cares about this person, which is why he's able to do it. Yeah. And that's why he's the Rose Master because if he was just heinous, then it wouldn't work. And no one want to be there. And it's funny though because on stage I said I, I used to be a furniture mover and I did that's move right. him. Yeah, that's I, right. I, oh my I God. From, that's right. He was moving in with his girlfriend mm-hmm. and from an apartment to a house in West Hollywood and I, I was one of the movers. Oh, so weird. Funny. At the oh time. And I mentioned it on yeah. stage. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Yeah. That like, is oh. so funny. Yeah. He was love. He was great, you know, and I think yeah. it, I know I personally thought, oh, he's like the roast guy, so he's he's going to be kind of snarky and mean. And, like, the kindest, Sweet coolest dude. So yeah. nice. um, totally up for talking and let us kind of grill him and ask him a bunch of questions about the roast master thing and the roasts and oh, his experiences cool. and was excited to talk to us about it and just really, really lovely. I'd love to yeah. get him on here. Oh, you should. Yes. I do want to say it on stage. Hey, you want to do my podcast? I know you should. You should. You you should. 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 Yeah. Yeah. He did. He did. He was a really last minute. I yeah. mean, like he, I think he came on a yeah. day or two days before. So yeah. he's a really good sport about yeah. coming and doing stuff. Our okay. director, Jake Harris, uh, directed a few of his stand-up specials. And oh, so right called on. him last minute and he came in. And um, that's cool. it was such a good sport. It, that's really, cool. really good. And Did he just look at you, around to you guys and just start tearing you apart? No. no. He was, I don't think that. Yeah, he was so, like he said, like at first I just had a totally incorrect view of what yeah. he would be like. Yeah. I thought he was going to be very snarky. And mm-hmm. he just was so kind and sweet and supportive and like was totally yeah. game and was so lovely like I just cannot say enough, enough nice things I about geeked him. out a little the first day he was there and he asked to take a picture with us and I was like Jeff Ross just asked to take a picture with us like mm. that's not how it's supposed to go well so his mom told totally him to do yeah oh. totally totally <laughs> totally he was he was great he was so awesome so you guys are so busy writing producing yeah. acting in the show I mean how long does it take to film an episode a week Eight we did four days. Four days. Four days. Whoa. Yeah, we had four and a half day episodes the first ten of Whoa. this season, and then four days in the back ten because we we it was a tough year to write twenty episodes, so we we wanted to buy ourselves a few more weeks of writing. So we traded in a few more weeks for just writing for some shorter episode days. What do you mean by it was a tough year to write? 20 episodes is a lot, and we they broke up. The first season we wrote we, all the all Did you episodes. want that many? Like, did you request that yeah. many? We didn't they, ask they for it, out? but we weren't going to say no, right. you know? So the first season we wrote all we wrote the pilot, did that all separately, but then wrote the other nine episodes, and then shot the other nine episodes, and then edited the nine episodes. Whereas this year, it was split up so that we, we wrote for, I think it was like, 15 weeks and then shot for 10 weeks and then wrote for another, you know, eight weeks and then shot again. And so Mm. we were, and all the while editing also, as soon as we started shooting, not only were we finishing some scripts while we were filming, we were also starting to send in notes for editing because we're very involved in the editing process. So it's a lot for your brain to wrap around all those different tasks at the same time doing other producer things. So is it an all year thing? It took us a year. This mm-hmm. one, we went up right to a year because we started April. April of last year. And by the time, so we've gone over a year because we're still editing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, we'll finish mid-June. We'll finish mid-June. But yeah. yeah, it's crazy. It's like, it's it's champagne problems yeah. because it's such an amazing experience. But it's a lot of work. Um, and we were writing while we were filming, which I just would not wish mm. on anybody. It's a lot of. It's different when you're not on camera. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we were, we were, you know, we were shooting a take. And then we, I think, I don't think, I think we had maybe two lunch breaks free the entire um, shooting period. Because every lunch break we'd meet in the writer's room, which we had a separate writer's room on location. And we would be looking at um, audition tapes that had come in right, or right. having wow. co- calls with promos and marketing people in New York and uh, yeah definitely champagne problems but a lot a lot a lot of champagne problems a lot of champagne problems (laughs) very tiring so so yeah so we um, I think we just kind of decided 
in terms of, yeah, four and a half days to four days, we thought, okay, we, we shot all our episodes in four days the first season. We know we can do it. Um, we want to make sure that these episodes are really well written. We don't want to rush our way through writing these or write them haphazardly while we're trying to shoot and then go to shoot them in four and a half days and not have them be as, as good as they can be. So, Do you guys so, do yeah. table reads too? Yeah. Mm-hmm. For all the episodes? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Kayla, uh, so uh, you're pregnant. Congratulations. I can Thank I ask so how much. far along? Yeah, I'm about five months. five months. So the baby is the size of a coconut. Okay. Yeah. Delicious. Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, and will the pregnancy be worked into the show or try to hide it? No. So we, um, I, when we wrapped filming the uh, end of the second season, I was about four months pregnant. So I can tell watching guys. Yeah, anybody else can. No one else can tell. I mean, it just, yeah. they, um, you know, the nice thing about my character, she wears very flowy clothes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so until she's naked, you were yes, naked in one shot. She was. <laughs> yeah, so that was pre pre pregnancy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so uh, yeah, so they, it's it's um it's hidden. Um, and then I'm due in August, uh, so I will you know miss a couple months of writing. But uh, you know that's that's life. And that's um, life. literally, yeah. literally, yeah, that's life. <laughs> literally, literally. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, but then by the time we start shooting again, I'll, it'll be six months since I've given birth. So. Okay. Hopefully, it won't look too different. We're watching. <laughs> uh, any new girl fans here? I'm a new. Me and my uh, girlfriend I don't watch a lot of new. Don't watch it regularly. So right she's then. pregnant. Oh, she is. Right okay. Now, and you could. You can totally just tell. Just hide in. I, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Season five. Sex and the City four. A lot of grocery bags. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. Even Julie Louis Dreyfus when she did Seinfeld. Yes. Holding a lot of. Coats in front of her I and big, love it. gigantic purses. Yeah, Caitlin oh was. Uh, she, I think you popped. Kind of, you. Right it became the last, the last like two weeks of yeah. shooting. It was like, oh yeah, and again, that's for us who see her literally every yeah, day, yeah. all day. Yeah. Um, we were like, okay, yeah, you're, you're pregnant. Coconut, she's the coconut stage. She's coconut. Coconut. Yeah. 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 Do you know, yeah. boy or girl? It's a girl. Congratulations. Oh Thank my you gosh, so you gonna name her Katie? Hell no. <laughs> uh-uh. no. Now, Katie did as a grasshopper. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do you know who actually came up with the name Katie did's was Sammy Tamimi oh, in Sammy. Chicago. Oh, yeah. 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 He, I was ta- this is very early stages. I was talking to him about the group, and he's like, what are you going to call it? And he's like, I don't know. And I said, I don't know what we're going to call it. And he's like, you should call you guys. You guys should be the Katie did's. I was like, I yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 It's funny, we have Google Alerts. Yes, yeah. We all have Google Alerts set up, and I have, you know, I definitely have Katie did set up as a Google Alert. Um, and um, and a lot of times I'll get, like, bug updates. Yeah. So I'll see I'll see a Google <laughs> Alert coming for the Katie did's, and I'll be like, the Katie did's mating call or something like that. And I'm like, what did we do? <laughs> we know what you We're did. talking about the bugs. One of you is pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, there, it worked. The mating call that. worked. So. Uh, so you're married. Mm-hmm. You're engaged. Yeah. Are you uh, boyfriend, husband? Um... You know, uh, oh, wait, is there something that we should know? <laughs> we're in talks, we're in talks. You're in talks, all right. Yeah, we're in talks. How long have you been with your fella? Um, almost a year. So, oh. um, we got it. Got a premonition. Um, uh, yeah, no, um, uh, Did you meet him out here, I guess. Yeah, met him out here. Um, we met on a blind date. Oh, um, wow, that still happens, right? Yeah, I mean, as blind as a date can be now that there's Facebook. Oh, um, because yeah. you met on Facebook. No, we didn't. So actually, oh. I was. I was. She at a, googled them. She I googled, googled them. I, see, I, I just love bassists. Um, uh, no, I was at a. I was in a wedding in New York, uh, one year ago this weekend, and um, I at the rehearsal dinner, I sat next to a woman who I didn't know, um, but we, you know, we both we both were in the wedding, so we both knew the bride. She just asked where I was from, and I was like, "Oh, I live in LA." And um, she's like, "So are you married, single? What's your deal?" You know, just like we were getting to know each other questions, and I was mm-hmm. like. I'm single, but I think I'm ready to, like, maybe go on a date. Like, I'd been, you know, basically single for about six months. I was like, I might be ready to, like, start going on dates or yeah. meeting people, you know. <clears throat> um, and she's like, I think you'd really like my friend Frank. And I was like, okay. So she sent a really awkward um, three-person Facebook message where <laughs> she's like, hey, guys, you guys should go out. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to kill you. Um, but uh, he was super nice and um is a truly lovely human being he's not a comedian mm-hmm. um which is my first mm, boo. i know <laughs> well I, I i only dated comedians since college and yeah. it really I, it, it had um 
roundly um, been disaster after disaster. <laughs> uh, it just it d- <laughs> does not work for me. Yeah. Um, but it's cool because he's a music- he's a professional musician, so okay. he creative understands yeah. the creative world. But they w- we will never compete against each other. Nice. I will never be in music. He will never be in comedy. So it's just purely like supporting each other, um, which obviously every co- couple is different. Um, but I you know kind of figured out that's what. That's for me. That's what works. Good. Yeah. All right, better. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Kate, uh, single. Anybody? Single. Yeah, looking ready, to mingle. Amazing. What are you looking for? Just send a Facebook what message. What are you looking for? If you, you have a for? boat, yeah. you might be the one. Oh, yeah. yeah. The premonition. Caitlin's premonition. What do you like? Who Who do you like? Um, Give us names. Okay. Uh, what do I like? I like. Funny, smart, and kind. I think that's a good combo. That's pretty good. So yeah. that's pretty good. And if they play the guitar, that's not a bad thing. And if he oh, looks like Hot Dad. Yeah. That's good, too. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah, Hot Guy's always a good thing. But she she has had a delivery recently in her life, a new puppy. Oh, yes. Oh. I mean, She's this dog girl. is insane. It is yeah. he's he's like so the cute. Dog what kind? What kind of dog? He's a Havanese. I don't know what that is. He's a... <laughs> they kind of look like... Stuffed animals. Little stuffed animals. He looks like... Yeah, actually, that's probably the best. He looks like a stuffed He really animal. doesn't look really How so big cute. How big look at? Under 12. Oh, small. Yeah, he's a little guy. Okay. Small His name is George Banks. George Banks. Is that from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Where is that? From the dad from Father the Bride and Mary Poppins. I was off. <laughs> you were, you were, you were, you were right. Yeah. And it was a character. Better than I All am. about how George Banks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's anybody, amazing. Everybody else have dogs? Yes. Mm-hmm. Everybody has dogs? Uh, I have a cat. You have a cat? You have cat. a cat person. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we both have dogs. You guys have yeah. dogs? M- Murray is Murray. Katie O'Brien's dog. Oh, yeah, Murray. Murray, yeah, yeah, yeah. my boy. Yeah, my we son. still got to do a uh, doggy date. I know. We gotta do a I doggy know. Date. I love yeah. that. He would love that. Yeah. Yeah. And what kind of dog do you have? Um, her name is Piper. She's um, We think she's Rat Terrier Basenji mix. We're not 100% sure. That sounds small. She's 25 pounds. Okay. Um, I grew up with big dogs. I grew up with labs and retrievers. And and so I think I always thought, like, no, I don't like small dogs. That's not my thing. And then um, we were living in Chicago, and we wanted to get a dog. I had two cats, and my husband was very allergic. And Mm -hmm. that was the first uh, sign that he was the one, was I was willing to find a new home for my cats, which was a bit... I didn't grow up a cat person. I grew up a dog person. But being a comedian in Chicago, having a dog... You know, just was too much. So I found a nice, loving home for them. I didn't drop them at the pound or something. And but I said to him, like, you better believe we're gonna have a dog in the next six months <laughs> if I'm getting rid of my cats. And so she's awesome. She's she's taller. She seems a little bigger than a small dog, and she's, uh, a, good she, she's a good size. You know, um, but yeah, I, I tended to think I was a big dog person, but now I I do love picking her up and, like a baby. She's a little too big for the lap, but she can still kind of fit most of herself on it. She's well, awesome. we're, we're gonna have a belated birthday party <gasps> for Banner. So your uh, dogs are uh, welcome to come. Oh, that'd be great. Banner. You can come oh, too. But a, thank you so much. I need to socialize doggy George. Daycare. That's good. Oh, Banner's at doggy daycare? <laughs> He's at doggy daycare. Which doggy daycare? Uh, well, I want to say exactly which yeah, one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, one that's fair. close by. Okay. You, you need to protect him. Yes. Privacy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the... Uh, Deborah came home with him one time and somebody there said, oh, he has a little girlfriend. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. That's cute. That is so cute. Do you know Jana Ma? Uh, I do from uh, Chicago. Kinda, yeah. Her dog. She. We live in the same building, and her dog Tori and Piper are kind of into each other. Like nice. in the, they're they're a little lesbian lovers. Oh, yeah. Cute. She's committed. She's I'm committed. Cute. I was gonna say. I think George and Katie Colleton's dog are kind of seeing each other. Mm. They, they. There were some very explicit photos. It so was, was like there was a lot of like George was like licking her face and her paws. He and being, her. He, well, he was no, he was just sniffing. Okay. He was, he was a gentleman, you guys. He's a gentleman. <laughs> He's no Donald Trump, right? Yeah. Now. <laughs> I, don't know. Lucy, I don't know. George is a classy guy. I think he's maybe out of. I think. I think that Lucy's Lucy trash. is trash. That's Katie, and I Katie think Collins that talk. George is out of her out of her league, for sure. Yeah, I think. Ka- so, Katie right. Collins' dog is. We love her so much. She's um, a great dog. She's a great, she's a great dog. dog, and she's a very like sexually liberated. She's mm. a sexually dog. liberated dog. She so is. A little, yeah, she much like your character. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, She when she meets another dog, she lifts her leg to reveal herself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, Making you know, it's it like, easy. It's like, yeah. you know what? Good Skip, for her. You're skipping a Put step. Yeah. 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 She, I think she got, um, 
assaulted at her doggy daycare. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, she got and victim blamed. Yeah. The dog got victim blamed. And so then K- Katie Carlton was like, you know, how did this happen? This isn't okay that my dog got assaulted. And the worker <laughs> at the doggy daycare blamed Lucy and said, well, Lucy is it's very provocative. It's very provocative. <laughs> Can yeah. you believe that? Yeah. They slut shamed her dog. They did. They, they, they victim blamed her. And see, we celebrate her freedom of her <laughs> yeah. sexuality. We celebrate yeah. it. That, by this making should be fun one of the. This should be an episode. I pushed really hard. We've talked no, about we it. Talked oh, about it. Oh, it's been a Do, conversation. Tell me this. Yeah. Do you have... Uh, every family member and friend that you know going, uh-huh. this should be an episode. Yes. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Right? You yes. should write you, this skit. You yeah, get yeah. that all the time, too, even in comedies. Like, now this, or my favorite is follow me around for a day. You'll have material for yeah, the year. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, 100%. That's probably 100%. true. When I first moved here, my mom was like, why don't you just go get a new dress, go down to the studios and introduce yourself. And like, it was like, oh, like that's how, like it was just like, so like no like concept of how things worked. And then she was like, why don't you email Tina Fey some of your story ideas? Like it was just so like easy. Yeah. 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 Or Caitlin's dad who didn't realize we were getting paid for the show until halfway through the first season. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. He didn't understand that was a real job. He just thought we were coming out here and doing um, he just thought we were coming out here and doing more like web, web funny web videos. Yeah, paying out of our own oh, pockets for him. Pay for this? Yeah, I'm volunteering. <laughs> yeah, this is my full time job now. I just I just put up a podcast with Scott Adsit. Oh, and, nice! And awesome. We talked similarly. Like my parents have said, send your headshots to Steven Spielberg. Hello. Right. I should He's, do. Um, so you so never easy. know. They go. You never know. I yeah. should do. You never know. Which and is then, fair. Which Scott had a story of. Uh, somebody said that he looked uh, uh, Frasier was coming out with his own show and somebody said you should send your headshot to because you look like Frasier. you look like Kelsey Grammer and he's like that's ridiculous and then he said uh, David Hyde Pierce got the part of the brother who sent his headshot Nuh-uh. because I look no like way. Yeah. Okay. for Frasier? oh my gosh okay. that's crazy that's amazing see that our can't... parents are onto something yeah so yeah. we're the idiots I know we <laughs> criticize them we act like they don't know what they're talking about not really but they have lived longer than we have they know more about life yeah really. well true. hey guys thank you so much for being thank here you. thank you for having, having us. us can you you want to plug your twitters instagrams sure. anything like that go right sure. ahead sure go right ahead I go ahead girl okay uh, Kate Lambert, uh, Instagram and Twitter is at it's Kate Lambert. Yeah, Katie Thomas or Catherine Renee Thomas, uh, and my Instagram and Twitter are at Miss Catherine Renee, and Catherine is spelled K A T H R Y N. Okay. Um, I feel like you can. I don't know what mine are. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> I'll look so, it up for you. Katie Claire O'Brien. Just look it up. Do you want me to look? I don't. Very Queen few, of marketing. I don't give a fuck. Kathleen O'Brien. O'Brien. Yeah. There's very few Katie O'Brien. There's very few Katie O'Brien. I have no idea. I'm gonna look uh, it up for you right Caitlin? now. Um, mine are really hard to remember. I'm okay. sorry. Um, so it's I do remember what they are, but you could Google me <laughs> or Twitter. I'm Caitlin underscore underscore Barlow. Forget it. Forget I know it. it's stupid. Pass, Just kidding. Pass. Stupid. <laughs> and then Instagram, I'm Caitlin GB. Well, I'm impressed that all six of you spell your names differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we do. For having a similar uh, yeah. connection, they're all, all the Kates spell it differently. All the Katies yeah. spell it differently. It's very interesting. Yeah. These yeah. two are the only ones. Well, Katie, oh, yeah. 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 But then again, like my yeah. porn, porn Catherine. my porn star sister took my name. Yeah, when I, <laughs> yeah. I thought I, I have to go by Catherine Thomas because. Katie Thomas is taken by porn star, but then there was already a Catherine Thomas also. And in the guild, in the union, you can't yeah, you I can't know. even phonetically have the same name. So I couldn't even spell it differently. And it's not like you could just go by my middle name when you're in a group of all yeah. Katie's. Like yeah. if I went by Renee, I'd stick out like a sore thumb. So yeah, I have this very out. long, ridiculous full name thing going on. <laughs> well, I'm I'm very impressed by what you guys have Thank accomplished. You. Thank, Thank you. you. I love the show. It's hilarious. Thank you. Thanks I will for continue having to us. watch. Thank you for being Thank here. You. Um, and you four are my favorite. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Oh, we won't tell the others. Did you Sorry. see Katie College? Did you see that? You saw it. <laughs> so go watch the show. You can watch it on uh, iTunes or the TV Land app. Mm-hmm. Amazon. Uh, Amazon mm-hmm. uh, DVR. On sure. demand. On yeah. demand, sure. probably. Yeah. Steal yeah. it on the internet. Steal, Steal it. Do whatever. Yeah. 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 Like it. whatever. You could ask them to reenact some of your yeah. favorite oh, scenes. Oh, anytime. I'd love to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At the Grove. At the Grove, we, specifically. We're there doing it every single <laughs> <laughs> Quick and proud so, for you. Right in front of the movie theater. Yeah. Well, there you go. Thanks so much, guys. Thank, Thank you so much. Best of luck with everything. Thank, Thank you. you.
But there you go, folks. That was the Katie Dids. Thank you so much to the four Katies for coming in and talking with me. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Congratulations to all your your marriages and your babies and the show and all that stuff. All so much so many good things happening for you guys. Well deserved. Um, so go follow them on the social media. <laughs> uh, don't follow them in real life though. You know what I mean? Just so just keep it keep it uh, keep it respectful. Um, and watch the show Teachers on TV Land. You can check it check it out on the app. Uh, or I do what I did. I just bought it on iTunes. And uh, there you go. Um, or, of course, you could watch it when it airs, <laughs> which I do not do at all for anything. But um, I'm sure some people do. Um, so there you go. And one more time for for the social media stuff for me is uh, Twitter at EJ Scott and at EJ Podcast. Instagram, EJ Scott 1106. Website, EJ Scott.com. The crowdrise.com slash seven on seven for the charities and running blind documentary on iTunes, Amazon, and Google Play. Check that out. Subscribe to my podcast on iHeartRadio and iTunes. Don't miss an episode. Check out my past episodes. You'll be glad you did. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening.